We're finishing off our busy news week with flash service PMI numbers for France, Germany, the UK, and the US. French flash service PMI came out lower than expected at 48.1, but flash manufacturing PMI beat expectations at 48.9. German flash manufacturing and flash service PMI both beat expectations with manufacturing coming out at 47.4 and services coming out at 49. Pound flash manufacturing missed at 44.7 but flash services PMI beat expectations coming out at 50. Lastly, both US flash PMI numbers missed with manufacturing PMI coming out at 46.2 and services PMI at 44.4. So here we are inside of the edge finder and we're gonna start like we usually do, taking a look at the market heat map first. Let's see how our currency pairs and indices have been trending. US dollar pairs up top, most of our dollar pairs are actually down on the day so far with USD JPY being uh, the biggest mover to the downside so far today, down 0.8% so far on the day. USDCHF on the other hand, our biggest mover to the upside, up 0.57% on the day so far. So not a whole lot of movement to the upside. Uh, other than USD JPY, not a ton of movement to, uh, movement to the downside either, but our indices are not doing well today at all. That was the same uh, case yesterday. All of our indices were down yesterday. All of our indices are down again today with German 30 being the least down, I guess you would say, only down 0.76%, which is still not very good, and the JP225 down point, or excuse me, 1.87%, so almost down two whole percent right there, uh, almost down 1% there, but yeah, indices not performing well whatsoever the last two days. Are you interested in our market scanning software, the Edge Finder? You can try it today for free. Click the link in the description and fill out the form letting us know you're interested in the software. A member from our team will contact you with trial access information. The Edge Finder has brand new features like price forecast and economic news. There has never been a better time to try out the software for yourself. Click the link in the description and try it out for free today. Euro. Uh, again, not a ton of movement except for uh, Euro JPY almost down one whole percent. Euro CHF only up 0.42 percent. Our pound pairs again are down. Our yen, the yen is just not performing very well. Yen down there, yen down there, yen down there. Aussie New Zealand down there actually. Um, but yeah, uh, GBP JPY down 0.96 percent. GBP CHF is up 0.34 percent. Uh, CHF JPY down 1.31%. All of our uh, yen pairs are down, but I guess we just took a look at that. CHF JPY down 1.31%. Uh, NZD CHF is up 1.04%, so that's not bad there. Uh, Aussie JPY down 0.97%. Aussie CHF, it looks like, yeah, Aussie CHF is actually our biggest mover to the upside right now, up 0.39%. And lastly, New Zealand dollar pairs, Aussie NZD is down 0.63%, NZD CHF up 1.04%. I can see that our biggest mover to the upside today so far is actually the US 10Y up 1.74%. What about gold? Gold is up 0.57%. And how about oil? USO, USO, oil. Oil is actually our biggest mover out of anything. Uh, next to the JP225, which is down 1.87%, oil is down 2.46%. So oil not doing well today at all. Gold is up a little bit though, up 0.57%. All right, let's get into the watch list. Let's look at some buy and sell signals. I'm gonna remove indices and commodities like usual. Sometimes I leave them in, sometimes I take them out. I'm gonna remove our neutrals though, so that we're just left with buys and sells. And we have a lot of uh, buy and sell signals in the edge finder right now. GBP, NZD, and Aussie NZD are still holding strong sell signals with scores of minus nine. USD CAD is still our strongest buy. This was the same yesterday, score of plus eight. NZD CAD, strong buy, score of plus six. Euro JPY, strong buy, score of plus six as well. NZD JPY, USD ZAR is a buy, CHF JPY is a buy, Euro CHF, NZD CHF, GBP JPY, GBP CHF, CAD CHF, Aussie USD, Euro NZD, and Aussie CHF. So the question is, what do we want to look at today? Should we look at a buy or a sell? Uh, I feel like we've been taking look, mostly looks at buys, 
but I've also taken a, a lot of looks at both of these pairs and with scores of minus nine there's not a whole lot of new information here although today is Friday we do get new institutional trader data on Fridays so I think that it would be beneficial to take a look at uh, US COT data. So that's what we're going to do. We're actually, we're going to take a look at USD CAD, our strongest buy score of plus eight. We're going to get brand new COT data for the US dollar as well as the Canadian dollar. And I think that we're actually going to go ahead and take a look at the chart on trading view after this as well, just so we can see uh, if this strong buy uh, signal here in the edge finder is lining up with what we see in the chart. So uh, like I mentioned, score of plus eight COT data comes out to a score of plus two retail sentiment a score of plus one we can take a look at our sentiment section right over here us dollar institutional trader data currently 76.24 percent long and 23.76 percent short canadian dollar 70 uh or excuse me 63.78 percent long and 63.22 percent short so uh a a decent favoritism on the long side for the us dollar slight favoritism uh, on the short side for the Canadian dollar. Retail traders, on the other hand, are 73% short, 27% long overall on the pair as a whole. Our seasonality is a score of plus one. We can see here that in the last 10 year average and last five year average, that the last 10 year uh, average is, is currently sitting above this zero kind of neutral line right here. Last five year average is like right on the line, however, Currently, it is below the line in our current year average. However, I suspect that this will, uh, assuming this strong buy signal holds up and this pair continues to move forward, I think that we'll end up crossing this line before the month is over and we'll follow in suit with uh, this last 10 year and last five year average having this pair perform uh historically speaking perform better in the month of december um, than when it starts the month at our trend reading is a score of plus two we can see the daily chart here pretty much ever since december 1st so the entire month it's pretty much been climbing higher and higher had a slight dip down here but we've already moved back up to this level of resistance right here and price forecast is predicting that we can that we break through that level um of course, we will see if that we will, we're going to check on the uh, the chart on TradingView to see if this trend reading really is uh, a plus two score, like it says. And lastly, our fundamentals: GDP growth, inflation, unemployment, and interest rates come out to scores of plus one, minus one, and then two plus one scores right here. We can take a look at those fundamentals right over here. U.S. dollar GDP growth, 2.9% uh, compared to Canada's 0.7%. U.S. unemployment currently 3.7% uh, compared to Canada's 5.1%. U.S. inflation is down a little bit. Uh, we had new CPI numbers come out this week. U.S. inflation 7.1% compared to Canada's 6.9%. And lastly, interest rates. Uh, we had new uh, FOMC data, new interest rates come out this week as well, raising interest rates up to 4.5% compared to Canada's 4.25%. Now, let's go ahead and get into the chart. I'm going to pull it up here. And here on the trading view chart, we're looking at the hourly chart right here. This is USD CAD. And we can see if I go all the way back to this is Tuesday. So this is about three days ago. We've seen strong upward moves here on the hourly chart so far. If we take a look at the daily chart, daily chart, we can see the same thing. We've been making uh, upward moves for the past uh past couple of weeks honestly i mean shot down a little bit but consistently it has been moving higher and higher and what if we looked at say like the 15 minute or even the 45 minute chart this is the 45 minute chart so this is again this is tuesday so a couple days ago just up and up and up creating new higher highs and it looks like we have actually no not quite i was going to say it looks like we may have broken through a level of resistance but it's probably more so around this area here there was maybe a small one here that we have now broken through but if we can cross above this mark here i think there's potential for this pair to continue moving forward let's look at the 15 minute chart as well just for fun and yeah on the 15 minute chart it's pretty clear to see that this pair has definitely been trending upward pretty solidly for the past couple of days and even on the daily chart the past couple of weeks 
I want to start out with the dollar and talk about this week in review a little bit because this week was a really big week. If you think about in terms of uh, the two major things, at least for the dollar, we had CPI and we also had uh, rates, right? And interest rates and CPI, of course, uh, they kind of go hand in hand. They're both very, very important things that talk about, of course, uh, the Fed's plan. Like, what are they going to do? Are they going to rate, uh, rate hike faster, slower? And, you know, rate hikes are a, a market's uh, worst nightmare when they're going up fast and, a, and the markets, you know, gives them uh, wind in the sail when they're going lower or staying steady, if you will. So uh, the last reporting that we saw this week was CPI came out cooler than expected, and we saw interest rates get raised in the U.S. by 50 basis points, as opposed to the uh, more concerning possibility of 75 basis points. We did not see that, and we're also expecting, I believe, the next rate hike to also be 50 basis points as well. So that's a little bit of uh, a fundamental background. Of course, many traders uh, on YouTube, they don't really pay attention to the fundamentals, but it's an important component that we talk about over and over on the stream because, of course, fundamentals are what really, truly drive the market higher or lower. It's the it's the wind in the sail, if you will. And technicals, sure, you can still do great with, with technical analysis, uh, but why not take advantage of some of the trends that you can find in the fundamentals as well, which is what hopefully you get out of these streams. Um, you know, for me, the dollar right now, yes, we had a bit of a rally here, uh, is still bearish. Uh, the dollar is still not necessarily in the clear for a bullish run by any means. We are just tagging up into a level of resistance. If we look left, we've got resistance here, right? So we broke through this area, uh, a big clean break, pulled all the way back, saw some rejection. And for me, this is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to look at this and I'm saying this is innocent till proven guilty, right? We're just expecting the trend to continue down. If this thing breaks, right, then we'll have to reevaluate and sort of reapproach this thing differently. But for now, the dollar looks bearish as we approach the 104.6 mark. In my personal opinion, we are tagging resistance and we should see some continued rejection as we've started to see so far. So, yeah. That's that's my take on it. So then, you know, how does that impact some of the currency crosses that we look at? This is crazy. The trend is like seriously. Whoa, this thing is flying. Uh, how do you keep trading this? It's just flying like seriously high. So actually, yeah, it's fine. What do we see here? I think this was this one is quite straightforward. No one will actually sell this where it is. Uh, and it's also difficult to buy on something which is just continuing buying like that because there is a chance for the market just to sell off. But maybe it's because I think Euro, uh, they were just increasing the rates. I think it's it's Europe. I think days before, I think even yesterday or today maybe, I think there was rates increase and stuff like that. So I think this is the reason behind that. So let's check what's really happening then. Let's just check that perfectly. So firstly, we need to connect the structure. Obviously, we can't just move like that. That won't actually make sense. But can we find something? Can we really find something? We need to find that out. So firstly, I will draw this. Next dance at this. I think this is the reasonable. I think this is like reasonable uh, uh, uptrend that we can point out. Uh, that one here is crazy. That like is seriously crazy. So where can we keep buying? Because already now we identified that this is an uptrend. This is actually an uptrend. So will can you find the areas where you can actually buy? That might be some serious difficult uh, thing to check. But let's just use a smaller time frame because to identify those structures, sometimes you need a smaller smaller time frame. I'm just going to use a one hour and I'm just going to zoom in and out just to find point area, <coughs> sorry, areas where I can keep buying. I think the market obviously will be creating something here. The market will be seriously creating something. We understand that the market was just pushing up like this, but can we connect some few points here? Let's try. Let's try. Let's be creative. Let's be creative. Let's see this thing. Firstly, you just have to point. You just have to draw something so that you can start, start to see things. Draw and start to move something. Once you just think uh, without doing that, sometimes you just limit yourself. I think I see something there. 
So can we identify areas like this? Let's try. They won't be perfect, by the way. Let's try. Let's try to point out those areas. I think uh, we might be up to something here. Seems like it's not fairly bad. Seems like it's not actually. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think this is not as bad as we thought. You see? Now we see areas that we were not seen before. I think even around this area, it's something. I will just push it up to there. So actually the market is giving us this up, down vibe. Do you see that? So it means, yeah, you can keep smashing this because it's actually creating a very nice move where it's creating range, range, or consolidate, consolidate, push up, do the same thing, push up, range, range, push up, range, range. You see that? So I think that is something that we can use. And I think you have to learn these things. You have to learn these things. You can't just see them every, uh, if you don't actually practice. I think the horizontal ones are the mostly reliable one. I know some people, they can say, okay, so I also see maybe uh, something like a uh, diagonal move. Yeah, we can mostly see that, but mostly you're going to miss enough trades if you just continue using only one diagonal line. So... That's why I prefer using horizontal lines. So now, currently, what we have, because the the best thing that we can do, or or the best thing, uh, the the better way to analyze is to have maybe the final answer to say whether we're going to buy or we're going to sell. So for those who maybe trade a uh, euro cad, I think around this support area, it's where they're supposed to do what take buy positions. Do you see that? So now we also expecting the same thing to happen here. So around the support, it's where they can do what? They can have those buy positions, something like this. Because it's been happening. It's a happening. So on a bigger time frame, in fact, there's no structures. If we even go lower and lower, they, it's going to be like perfect. If we go and use 15 minutes, all these structures, they're now going to make sense. Do you see that? So another thing is... Have skill on combining your time frames try to understand these time frames because sometimes not understanding what's really happening on a bigger time frame and a smaller time frame it's also <clears throat> it's also a lack of information you need to understand that you need to understand you just know that if you want to see things way much better you have to go on a smaller time frame maybe a bigger trend or a nice trend bigger time frame so you can't just go on 15 minutes just to actually get on 15 minutes you see this i was trying to show you mostly you can see them on four hours time frame you see so i think also euro cat i think I, this is euro cat okay so i think i think uh, uh, so i think on a bigger time frame now we have an idea what will happen so we expecting we expecting moves like this because they repeat themselves too much like most of the time we expecting small move small move small move so on this one i can say just buy relax then the market will start to push in your favor if you are following the trend but i don't really trust this type of uh, aggressive trend like that they see enough chance or enough room for the market to do what to just sell off before pushing up again yes we see that we are on an uptrend but you can't just keep buying where hey it's i think it's like seriously like risky but that is like extra extra risk buying there but yeah i'm not saying the trend is going to change like anytime soon i just think maybe the market actually will be actually 
maybe reversing in 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 few minutes make sure you guys check out the links in the description if you need broker recommendations access to our free discord or want to chat with us on telegram if you're interested in our trading software the edge finder you can find that in the description as well thanks for watching